Inspector Gadget. I used to fanboy over this movie all the time. It's boring as sin and it hurts to watch. Please don't watch it. Star Wars Clone Wars. It's an underrated gem by the creator of Samurai Jack. It's available for free on YouTube, so please check it out. Toy Story. It's a classic. Everyone loves this. It's it's the reason why we still got 3D animated movies to this day, so um, thank Toy Story for that. Also, it's a pretty great film. You should definitely check it out if you haven't already. Rugrats, the movie. Um, this this one was pretty great, I guess. The Grinch. Th th this one was really embarrassing, but uh, I heard a few people liked it based out of nostalgia, so uh, whatever. Shrek. Um, it's Shrek. Uh, ogres are like onions. Hey, now you're an all-star. SpongeBob, the movie. Um, this one was a pretty great nostalgia trip, and uh, I absolutely uh, still really like this movie. Toy Story 2. This one improves upon the original and adds new characters that stay throughout the entire m franchise. Meet the Robinsons. This one is also another nostalgia trip, but it's really underrated. Those who reference it are instantly now a god. The Incredibles. This, there's a reason why this movie is still highly regarded in the animation community today. Its screenplay is amazing, and the animation was impressive for the time. Wreck-It Ralph. What an amazing video game adaptation. Uh, the, the twist was alright. The twist villain was already at the end. Finding Nemo. This one uh, almost grossed a billion dollars, which was impressive. Uh, by the way, it was kind of forgettable, but it was alright. Monsters, Inc. Um, it's a classic. A another classic from Pixar. De definitely one of their best works. Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas. This The animation looks like something straight out of Uncanny Valley Hell. Kung Fu Panda 3. This one is alright. It, it isn't as great as the original or the second one, definitely, but it, it was alright. Cars. This is one of the first bad movies from Pixar. Uh, I, I do not understand why they have to be cars. The Secret Life of Pets. It's like if... It's like if Toy Story was Furries, Despicable Me 1 and 2. But both of these are just alright. They, they have minions, which doesn't really help. The Little Mermaid, this one is a classic. It started the Disney Renaissance. It's a pretty awesome film. Madagascar 2. Um, this is actually the best of the Madagascar series. It's absolutely amazing. It also has Moto Moto, which definitely helps. Madagascar 3. Definitely one of the most cliched movies I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, kinda watch it, I guess? Kung Fu Panda. Ah, the one that started it all. Or at least just the Kung Fu Panda trilogy in general. It, it had a TV show, it had a few shorts. It, it was awesome. Kung Fu Panda 2. Definitely one of the most emotional driven movies in the entire series. And it's definitely uh, heartbreaking to see a few scenes. Diary of a Wimpy Kid 1, 2, and 3. They are absolutely fantastic movies, and they um, definitely uh, have some elements of the books while adding some new elements of their own, and sometimes even combining them at some times. Secrets of the Masters. What started out as a tie-in to Kung Fu Panda 2 suddenly turned into an emotionally driven origin story of Master Ox, Croc, and Rhino. The Incredibles 2. The animation is absolutely breathtaking, but the twist villain was, um, I'd say uninspired. The Nightmare Before Christmas. This movie is really experimental and it absolutely paid off. And a music. Another experimental um, album from uh, epic gamer Wayne Lytle and uh, it was revolutionary. Everyone loved it. Or at least um, everyone that I know at least. The Good Dinosaur. The animation like I said is breathtaking but the story is really cliched. Moana. Um... This one is absolutely amazing. Who, who can no, no one can deny that Moana is absolutely great, and Tamatoa is the best Disney villain ever of all time, hands down. Don't at me, Storks. Do you want to watch really quirky animation while watching, um, while watching an eighteen-year-old and a seagull, um, uh, yell at each other for about a few hours? Sure, uh, I'm I'm down with that. Sing. Uh, this one tries to like be relatable to teenagers. Tries to pander to all them boomers and teenagers, but I ain't falling for that. Shrek 2, po possibly the most perfect sequel ever invented, and the climax is absolutely awesome. The comedy is really amazing. De definitely give this a watch if you haven't. Zootopia, it's a um, com commentary about, uh, about really relatable stuff, but with furries, and it absolutely pays off. I heard um, Alexa really loves this movie. 
The Legend of Frost and the Snowman. I know it's not a um, feature movie, but I gotta reference it anyway, because why not? Frosty the Snowman, it's, uh, it's a pretty great um, holiday movie, and um, The Legend of Frosty the Snowman, I thought the art style was alright. The animation was definitely not at its best, but it's alright. Phineas and Verve Across the Second Dimension. I know this one wasn't a feature animated movie, but still, it's a pretty epic movie, so I gotta mention it. Uh, Phineas and Verve Across the Second Dimension, it's, it's an awesome movie. It's a... It's where um, everyone uh, meets their um, alternative selves at the dystopian future where Doofenshmirtz has ruled the entire world. Um, all because he lost his toy choo-choo. Um, it's definitely a pretty amazing movie, although it's kind of um, stupid how they had to wipe everyone's memories at the end. Um, but, but still, you should give it a watch. It's an, it's an amazing TV movie. Cars Free. It's like an executive at Pixar said, Let's actually make Cars good. Barnyard. This one is pretty awful. I don't. I don't understand how they made a TV show about it, but who cares? A Bug's Life. Um, definitely one of the most okay movies from Pixar. It, it's okay. Buzz Lightyear Star Command. It's two D animated, which is pretty good. Um, the uh, animation is absolutely amazing. Although it looks like those direct to DVD movies, but. Still, it's uh, pretty great, and it also um, successfully made a TV show, Up. The first ten minutes is absolutely breathtaking. The rest of the movie is alright. Chicken Little. Why is everyone so mean-spirited towards Chicken Little? I mean, all, all he said was that the sky was falling, he was just an acorn. Why, why, why does everyone have to be a bully to him? God, this movie's so mean-spirited. I especially hated his dad, Buck Cluck. He, he's, so, he's so rude. He's like... He's like prompting Chicken Little to just give up and stuff. That that's awful. That's really really awful. Puss in Boots, a spin-off to Shrek that got a well-deserved Netflix show and should definitely get a well-deserved sequel. Inspector Gadget 2, a totally not well-deserved sequel and like 4 years after the original. Are you kidding me? And uh this one is even worse. The climax had really 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 awful graphics. You should definitely not watch it at all. But, um, uh, Gadget's performance is definitely a step up from the first one. He's not monotone, he's not boring, he's, he's just memorable like the Grinch. Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2. I definitely love it when, like, sequels take place immediately after, after the original. Muzzy. I somehow still remember all the characters' names. The King, the Queen, Sylvia, Bob, Corvax, Norman, and of course Muzzy. It's like a British, um, show that teaches kids different languages, from French to Spanish to English. It's a, um, it's, uh, kind of boring a little, but, oh well, it's muzzy, who cares? Steven Universe, the movie. So basically, there's this formula that all Steven Universe arcs have to face. There's a new villain fret, and, uh, Steven has to, um, like, bond with them, so that they, um, can have their redemption arc. So that way they become better people and they become, uh, one of the crystal gems, or, or at least, like, uh, like, they become good guys now. Well, basically, the way Steven Universe, Steven Universe the movie does it, it, it is absolutely improved. Like, like, uh, like, it is absolutely done better this time. It, and, and the fact that it's an hour long just makes it better. And they, like, had to do this, like, four times because of Spinel's Rejuvenator. It, um, resets, resets everyone's memories. So, um, they have to, like, um, like, uh, sing a song in order for them to remember and stuff. It's basically like an amnesia moment, but, oh well. Uh, I was so desperate to see this movie when it was all the buzz on Twitter. And when I saw it, I was like, why didn't I see the why didn't I see this sooner? It's so amazing. So yeah, you should definitely check out Steven, Univer Steven Universe the movie if you haven't. Um, it's probably available for free on Xfinity, uh, on demand, or whatever. I have Xfinity, so I'm allowed to say that. Whatever. The Steven Universe movie is amazing. Go watch it. The Polar Express. Welcome to hell. Wallace and Grandma the Curse of the Were-Rabbit. It's an absolutely charming movie and absolutely amazing animation for 2005. Go watch it. Wally. The first half was amazing, but then the second half dragged on, and I kind of lost interest. Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. It's a pretty solid, quirky 2009 movie, and it's really awesome. Toy Story 3. The ending made you cry, didn't it? Cars 2. It's just hot garbage.
Frozen 2. I absolutely hate their marketing decisions. The Lego movie. It's, um, it's really amazing. The animation kind of looks like stop motion, and it's really imaginative, imaginative and really funny. Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. It's really boring. Don't watch it. Inside Out. Really creative, really funny, and absolutely relatable. Like, I just moved about, like, uh, three months ago, I think. And, uh, I already want to go back to, uh, my old hometown, so... Yeah, Inside Out is really relatable, guys. Minions. It's just a series of ideas poorly strung together in a, in a one-hour movie. E.T. I thought it was kind of boring, but then the climax happened. Then it was really awesome. The Angry Birds movie. I thought it was okay for a mobile game adaptation. And a music, too. Another series of animated music videos by Epic Gamer Wayne Lytle. It's very epic. Captain Underpants, the first epic movie. You know it's really epic when they say that it's an epic movie. And uh, Captain Underpants is severely underrated. You, y'all should read the books and check out this movie and probably watch the Netflix cartoon if you even have Netflix. Robots, another severely underrated movie that's entirely overlooked. Also, Ewan McGregor is in this movie. That's right. Obi-Wan is in this movie, you fags. This movie is absolutely epic. All of you should watch it. It is absolutely awesome, and it looks really shiny and impressive. Shiny! Nine. We're saving the best for last here, folks. This is probably one of the greatest PG-13 animated movies ever made. Numero nine. The story follows nine as he gets uh, as he gets joined by a group of other um, Stitch Punks that go from one to eight. That, that's literally their names. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, ah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine. And then everyone dies except for seven, three, four, and nine. They um they are the last survivors of humanity after Germany made robots that killed all the humans. So then they must restore life to humanity and kill all the robots. And and it's a very amazing title. It's like an alternate Germany if they were much more crueler and there wasn't a Hitler and stuff like that. So yeah, check out this movie. It's absolutely amazing. It's produced by Tim Burton. And that's all the movies I can review right now. So, peace out, y'all.